you today, and most m m more importantly, get you lot to talk back as well about uh, Debian Web's site and the Debian Wiki. Um, this is explicitly a boff. I do not want to be talking here for more than about five minutes. I want to have a discussion with people. Um, let's see how it goes. So, quick agenda. I have a couple of slides. Let's go through status, plans, help needed. Oh, hell yes, there is help needed. Uh, and if you've got any discussions and ideas, uh, yes, please talk to us if you're here or on, I on IRC if you're not. Um, and we'll try and, you know, relay questions. Please take notes in Gobby, someone. Um, I will endeavour to send out notes after this. Uh, it may take a week or so. So, Debian web team. Um, I have commit access, but I don't pretend to be anything, to have any great power or control over the web, st web team. Does anybody else here have anything more? Um, we're still using CVS, despite the fact people have been talking for, what, a decade or so about moving away from it. Um, I would love it if we moved over to Git. There's been discussion about that several times over the years. Uh, there's been some pushback in that, um, A, people are scared that it's going to be a big repo and it's, that's going to put people off downloading it and, and working with it. I don't believe that to be a major problem at all, personally. Um, but hell, you know, I'm not in the situation, I'm not one of those people who might be put off, clearly. Um, the other thing is that the Git workflow, it is claimed, may put off some of the more casual contributors. Um, I'm not equally not all that convinced that CVS is a wonderful tool for those people either. Um, but it's difficult to know. I don't tend to talk to these people very often. Um, I hope other people may have more insight. Is the mic on? Test. Um, so Ron has done a conversion of the, the uh, website to Git, but I'm not sure if it's updated or... But it's certainly not synced with the main yeah. website. I mean, how big was it at the time, do you know? I have no idea. <laughs> okay. Uh, I mean, my own personal thing is, I used to be the CVS maintainer. It's horrible. I got away from it, and, uh, and that made me very happy. I haven't had to do use CVS for anything else in five years. Every time that I come across doing stuff in, uh, for the Debian website, and believe me, I don't do much, it's typically tweaking pages to do with CDs. Um, all of my finger memory has gone away, and I end up having to, having to fight with it. So the biggest problem with the conversion to Git is that with the current translation system relies on the CVS ID numbers. Oh, God. Uh, CVS revision numbers. Right. So you'd have to switch to git commit IDs, I guess? I guess so. Well, of course, they're not going to be... I mean, of course, I've seen this in other situations. They're not monotonically increasing, so it's not as easy to, tw to work with. Yes, and the other thing is that there's... For some pages, there's a chain of translation. The original might be in Polish and then an English version gets translated, and then that gets translated to German and Japanese and whatnot. Yeah. So, yeah, it seems a bit complicated. Mm. And so we'd probably have to invent a different way of doing that. A different workflow. Yes, probably not involving commit IDs. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Well, one thing that could help with that is converting to something that we can do normal get text files. Mm. Uh, not sure about if that's possible with WML. Anyone know? I don't see why not. But I we don't have uh, Jonas yeah. here, unfortunately. So, meh. Um, anything else people would like to talk about about the website stuff? You know, sorry, that's my pet peeve out the way. Uh, the reason I put did the boff here together for the two groups 
is to, to not just take up too much time, but I guess everything's perfect, otherwise people, more people will be here, like, you know, torches and pitchforks. <laughs> is anyone on IRC watching interested? There are a few people on IRC, but they're not saying anything. Fine. I guess we'll move on. This could be a short off. So, the wiki, which is the main thing that I'm interested in, I'll be honest. Uh, Paul and I are the two active um, wiki maintainers in terms of we, we, we have shell access onto the wiki server and we can do everything on it just about. Uh, several other people have um, super user access within Moin itself, which means they can do things like set ACLs, they can go and delete spam, that kind of thing easily. Um, more support, more help is always useful. Uh, believe me, like every team, we have many, many other things that we want to do, if only we had more time to do it. And the individual people are busy doing other tasks too. Um, but fine. Um, I did a check last night, and we have currently have 12,203 pages in the wiki. Of course, we probably have a couple more since then. Um, that's a scary number, it really is. Um, most of them are out of date. Um, this does not count spam pages. Um, there are quite a lot more pages that did exist but have been deleted since. Uh, this is system info, so it only checks things that are currently valid. Um, the number that scared me even more was, a was the system seemed to tell me we've got 12,500 registered user accounts. Now, we did have about 3,500, 4,000 more spammers um, which have been disabled. That number seemed very high, um, but I couldn't find anything that told me that I did, I'd counted it wrong. Um, we're currently running uh, Moin Moin. We're on a mostly clean version 1.9.4. We have a few patches that mostly that I've come up with um, for helping with spam. Uh, we're about to move to 1.9.7 probably today. Uh, again, still with a couple of local patches. Um, I'm going to jinx things and say, I think we solved the spam problem. Um, three years ago, when I really started getting involved with the wiki stuff, we had a horrendous problem of people uh, just posting all kinds of crap all over the wiki, like they do. Um, we've gone through a whole slew of different approaches to stopping spam. Um, the main one is you, you must now be a registered user to be able to uh, edit pages at all. And to create a user account these days, shockingly, you've got to be able to register, by, register with an email address. Uh, still something that's missing in Moin. The patch that I have to add this is something I need, I'm hoping to get pushed up again this week. Uh, I've been talking with Upstream. Um, even, the, even forcing people to have working email, of course, doesn't stop the spammers. Um, you'd be amazed how many we get, still, still trying to get through. Um, the second part of the spam stuff is basically, um, I've come up with a big set of heuristics um, and encoded them in a Perl script. So whenever anybody tries to sign up for an account in the Debian Wiki, um, we have a script that basically has historical knowledge of what looks good, what looks bad. It's not quite Bayesian, but it's approaching it these days. So, for, as, a, as a rule of thumb, if you try and sign up for a Debian Wiki account and you're coming from Hotmail, it's not going to work. Um, because to a first approximation, 99.99999% of Hotmail signups are spammers. Um, it, don't get me wrong, it's not just Hotmail. If you're using a Gmail address, it's unlikely that you will be able to create an account straight away uh, unless you, are, you look particularly non-spammy. Uh, again, all of the free email providers are too easy for spammers to sign up with. Oh, 
Paul, we have we have comments. Oh, just a quick question. oh yes. Um, hi. Uh, do you have to be a registered uh, Debian developer to get a Debian Wiki user account? No, not at all. All right. Just because I'm a noob, so I, I'm oh, not yeah, absolutely. a registered Debian yes. developer. Sure. Um, and we have a question at the back as well. Um, I'm, I'm new to Debian. Could you explain to me how you're uh, uh, making sure that the user looks less spammy? Um, sure. Um, a typical spammer in fact, I'll show you in a moment. I've got a demo um, of, the system I, of the system I currently use to look at it. A typical spammer sign-up will have something, some random sequence of alphanumerics at hotmail.com for an email address. For their user account name, will have four or five um, digits or capital letters as an email address. Uh, sorry, as a, as a user account with no overlap between the two. Um, they will be coming from... Um, as often as not, um, a random Chinese um, mobile um, IP, or they'll be coming from a known spam haven. Um, I'll list a few of those in a moment as examples. Um, if you're coming from one of those, then the, the, the anti-spam script will basically, it gives them all scores, and if your score is above quite a low number, uh, your total score, then you just get told no. If you try to come from the same IP address um, too quickly, say in less than two or three days, um, and you try three or four times with, again, obviously ridiculously spammy things, we blacklist the IP and say, sorry, that's it, you're not getting in. Blacklisting the IP isn't just a, you can't sign up, it's a, well, you're clearly not interested in Debian, we blacklist it, you don't get to see the Debian wiki anymore. Um, going beyond that, if there are obvious patterns, and we see it all the time, where um, a whole slew of addresses from the same network provider, all in the space of one overnight session, we, I've, I've seen some, say, a couple of hundred attempts from uh, loads of things in the same slash 24 or something, we will just block the slash 24. Um, if I go... Let's see if I can make this fit. Um, basically, I have almost a console running on the wiki, and I'm not on the network, of course, am I? Bear with me. Um, we've tried using captures in the past um, for a short period, and I mean short, like a few weeks, it helped. Um, there are so many problems with using, um, especially recapture, um, blind and partially sighted users are screwed over. Uh, privacy violations. Privacy violations. There are so many problems with it. To be honest, the biggest problem is it doesn't work. Um, we actually found it didn't help for more than a few weeks. Um, the spammers have already solved the recapture problem, yeah. oh, their, their problem with it. Um, they either have systems that manage it automatically or for pennies, they get people, out, people in the third world or whatever to just sign up and do them for them. So the fact that we're already seeing people coming from Hotmail, Gmail, Yahoo, where you've already got to have done a capture to get the email address in the first place, means that, well, you know, people have solved this problem. We, we can slow them down a very small amount, but unfortunately it just had no effect. And it did legitimately annoy a number of people who wanted to be contributors. So, again, I added a recapture patch for Moin, which, has gone, which I'm pushing upstream, in case other people want it. To be honest, I wrote it and then turned it off. So, Steve, on that front, I talked to Intree, and he said he sent you a script 
So that uh, we can whitelist tour exit nodes? Yes. And it would be great to integrate that at some point. That would be lovely. So that we don't ban people who like to be anonymous. Yeah. And again, that's something I'll come back to in a moment. If you have a look, I have a simple s screen session that's running on wiki.debian.org. I hope it's, I don't know how visible that is. Uh, yeah. And then it's basically going to go away. Um, is that more readable? That's about as big as I can do. You will see, basically, I have something, I have a monitor script that runs, and just for my information, basically goes, um, every couple of minutes, it checks through the last so many days worth of, of account sign-up attempts. I've got something that will give me the IP address that something came from. A call. Of course it's got no reverse DNS. This is one at the top. We have, as I was saying earlier, we have oh, random looking attempts. So with this person has tried to sign up twice, or this IP address has tried to sign up twice with two entirely arbitrary looking stupid names with two all other you know also entirely stupid looking random um, hotmail accounts um, they 're not getting in um, so i 've denied we 've denied both of those. The average score that we 've given them is twenty nine just based on the information that that 's given us. A score of 29 is much more than the threshold of 10. They're not getting in. It's as simple as that. They've only attempted twice. If this same IP address had tried a third one with yet another username and yet another email address, the, the, the system will actually say, um, you're clearly irredeemably a spammer, go away, and we'll block the IP address. Um, the next one down, looks maybe more believable in that the email addresses are at least vaguely consistent but still Yandex is a well-known Russian search engine and free email provider and again they've got stupid names it's not a guarantee of spam none of this is it a lot of it comes down to judgment but I'm not about to, to block them if they try again with an average score of 28 and higher again they'll get blocked Yesterday, I wanted to sign up for the wiki uh, yes. to edit for the wine and cheese party thing. And uh, I have a live.in account yeah. simply because it was easy for me to get that handle. And I sure. did not receive a confirmation email. So how do you deal with people who are genuine but still have emails coming in from live? It is a very good question. Um, when you try to sign up, um, if you have been blocked, you will actually see, it's not as obvious as it should be, I know, and I know it, this is a problem. Um, why, uh, after you, you do the register account, you, will actually, you should be told at the very top of the next page in a banner, um, sorry, there was an error. Um, if that error persists, uh, and it will give you a, a, an error code. The error code is purely and simply, it's um, the number 900 with your spam possibility score added to it. So if you, if you get an error code saying, error 914, please try again if this continues, mail Debian, wah, 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 at lists.debian.org, then that's what, what is meant to do. It's not perfect, and for people who don't speak English, and we have quite a number of those, obviously, it's, it's not great. It's the best thing we can do for false positives. If you mail Debian, wah, 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 or wiki at debian.org, and say, oh, I've, you know, I've tried to get in and I've got this error message, uh, Pabs or I, um, we, do it, we do it every day, we can whitelist the email address and then the next time you try and sign up, it will let you in. Okay. Thank you. Um, I don't want to spend, I've spent too, much, too long on this already, because frankly, um, spam is horrible, I hate it. I'd, like, I'd actually, and I'm not kidding, see it as a capital crime. Um, <laughs> So, but the point of the anti-spam stuff isn't the, the, point, the point of a boff, it's not the point of the wiki. The point of the wiki is the content, and that's, that's why we want to get shut of the crap. Perhaps. Um, we have a couple of comments from the Gobby thing. Yes. Um, Debian deserves an Archers or Gentoo's grade wiki. That's one of the yes, comments. Yes, we do. 
um, there's an idea to freeze the wiki per release and copy on right to the new version. Um, I've added an alternative idea to that to add some macros allowing pages to know what the current release is and show the stable yes. release. That's pretty easy. Yeah, oh, you've um, done that. I've yeah. done a couple of things so that you can show the, na the name of the current stable sure. release. Um, um, and it it's probably not that hard to extend that to yeah. have Wait. something like that. Yeah. Our wiki is is very large. We have a huge amount of, of data. Um, like any wiki out there on the net, probably half of it is outdated or crap. I, don't know, you know, I wish that was an exaggeration, but it's probably an underestimate. Um, the Gen 2 wiki was was great, as I understand, and then they then they moved site, um, decided that they wanted to start again, and it never quite happened. You know, a lot of the content just ne never reappeared. The Arch Wiki is absolutely awesome. They've got a great community of people who keep on posting vast amounts of really good documentation. Some of it is Arch specific, obviously, and doesn't necessarily translate. But half the time, if I go looking for, a, you know, to solve a problem, you know, I've got a laptop configuration issue or whatever, I do a search and the Arch Wiki is at the top with not only good content, but good links as to where to find more information. Yes, it's great. Um, it, the Debian Wiki is also great in some respects, but it, it often comes up in, in good searches. Unfortunately, quite often with the same outdated information that I, I know because I wrote it a few years ago, that kind of thing. You know, hell, the internet's like that. Have you reached out to the uh, Arch folks and asked if they were about spam? Uh, I haven't, no, not yet. Um, I know they're using MediaWiki or something that looks very like MediaWiki. Um, one of the issues with the different wiki engines is they all have very, very different spam setups and very different spam solutions. Um, <coughs> Moin is very much our preferred setup. We have this uh, something that you know happens every few, every couple of years. We have the boff like this. People ask about, well, should we use a different wiki engine? And the answer is um, possibly, but who's going to do it? Um, and the, the big problem with switching wiki engines is then move, migrating content or not, and then you end up with an empty wiki and nobody uses it. So, <coughs> sorry. So, if someone was interested in doing at least a test case of media wiki migration, mm -hmm. that would, I just asked this in the IRC, but that would require having like a, you know, an actual like copy of the media Absolute. wiki. Obviously, like the GitHub that you, or the Git that you can get from uh, the, Teams slash Debian yeah. wiki is just the scripts. Is there a way exactly. to get a copy of the entire wiki? We can happily give you a, t a, t a toggle dump of the entire wiki. We have done to a couple of people in the last few years. Right. Yes. Uh, in addition, I wrote a patch for Moin so that we can have a daily generated uh, offline copy in HTML format for people who uh, are in remote locations and want to read the Debian wiki. Yeah. Unfortunately, that hasn't seen much traction upstream. Mm. Steve, do you have any way to like get people to review my patch? Or I mean, it's um, been reviewed a few times and I've fixed oh, it up. Um, Moin upstream are very helpful. Thomas in particular is really cool. Like a lot yeah. of us is, is, is overworked. Uh, best thing teams. to do with the Moin people, to be honest, is talk to them on RSC and push the patch in, into the upstream Moin wiki as, for, as a patch for review. Yeah, um, I mean, I've done both of those things. Sure. Ping, ping again. More. Ping again, they get busy. Uh, again, they don't tend to do that much by email. It tends to be IRC or Wiki itself. Um, I mean, Thomas is good enough that, to be honest, he's interested in the patches that we, that we have for, for, you know, for Moin 1.9, uh, for the recapture and the mail verification. Um, and I've just been too rubbish at refactoring them and dealing with his review comments, which are like at least six months old, possibly 12. Um, again, it's on my list to do this week. Um, other th things that we do have, and again, again, a wiki is all about the content. Forget, you know, the engine is frankly irrelevant in the long run. <laughs> the main thing that you need is good content. And good content, of course, is correct, up to date, and maintained. Um, I do have uh, the first cut of a 
uh, of a script that will walk through a MOIN and will go looking for pages that are out of date. And so we can actually, we could start maybe using it, pick out the users who, who, who have contributed to pages pre previously, and say after six months, if pages are tagged appropriately, say, um, you suggested that this page needs reviewing every six months, um, please, you know, please check and update it. Because um, I think that's a useful thing, and I've never seen any wiki do that. And that's not to say I've played with every wiki on the planet, you know, there's far too many, clearly. Um, but I think that will be a useful thing to have. I just haven't rolled it out and, and really tested it yet. Um, the, there are issues, of course, that people doing trivial spelling tweaks, of course, will reset the counter. Equally, the people doing the, the trivial spelling tweaks will then be the, the last people who touch the page, so they will then get pestered about the content and say, um, you're clearly the expert about you know, the details of the kernel driver for this USB webcam. Please tell us more about it. You know, please check it's correct. When all they've done is they've added a link to the Russian translation or something. It's not perfect, but I think it, it'll, it'll be a good start. Uh, yes, it is. Um, the num do you know how many people use it? <laughs> Approximately zero. <laughs> Hello? Yeah. Uh, wh what about like using templates? Have we explored that? Like basically bootstrap new pages with templates for common... So Moin ha does have a template feature and uh, yeah. a bunch of pages already use that. Um, so there's like... 20 or 30 templates already. Yeah. Um, depends on what kind of page you want to create. And yeah. yeah. For, for certain things, say set announcing that you're going to Bugs do a BSP, parties, exactly, or whatever. We have a really stuff. good template for that already, that, so you don't need to fill in all the details yourself. You can just fill in, and it generates the rest. It, um, again, it, it comes down to people using it and people maintaining those. Um, if you have ideas for things you think we're missing, please chat. Point going to that. Um, that's about it for what I had to talk about, really. Uh, um, we are always looking for more people to help, as I said. Uh, is, especially with the bugs. Especially with the bugs. Because they're kind of uh, piling up and yeah. aren't being looked at. Oh, yes. <laughs> Um, there is a, a wiki.debian.org BTS uh, category, um, and yeah, we're not very good at tracking bugs there necessarily. Um, we do see them, honest. Maybe we can mention some of the special features that we have on Debian Wiki. Um, Go ahead. Do you, do you want to come up? And <laughs> I can do it. Right <laughs> um, so, one of the things is that when you add a link to the Debian bug tracker, we have some JavaScript to go and look up the status of the bug and alter the CSS on the page so that it's more obvious what the status is. And then you can hover over it and see the title and all that sort of stuff. Um, also, the wiki looks up daily what the current Debian release is. And then you can uh, say, what's the code name for the stable release? And there's a macro for that. Um, and there's another one for release dates and for version numbers. And there's, all, there's one more macro for linking to message IDs. So it will just link to the Debian lists URL for the message ID. Yeah. Uh, there's also, I mean, there's a, a convention for if you're working on stuff in the wiki and you want it to stay around because it's linked elsewhere, there is also the category permalink which we use um, to make sure that, say, especially later, where if people have got, have, we've mailed out press releases and stuff that link to things in the wiki, that those pages don't go away when people are finding them in the archives later, that kind of thing. So, so one suggestion for my RC um, is that a couple of people are suggesting they could do a www slash wiki bug squashing party, party remotely at some point to try and get through some bugs and, and things like that. So That would be cool. Um, 
There is, there is um, going to be a bit of a step change coming, um, of course, and I should have mentioned it earlier and it's just, just remembered. One thing that we don't have yet for the wiki is single sign-on. Um, so if you're a Debian developer or an Alia um, user or, or, or anyone, any other random person, everybody at the moment has their own separate wiki account. Frankly, that's crap. Um, and single sign-on is mostly working. It's still in flux for, for a lot for some of the Debian uh, web space. Um, we're planning on looking into single sign-on real soon now. We have been for a while. The only reason it hasn't happened yet is down to manpower and other people doing other sites first with a single sign-on. Um, so if you have a Debian Wiki account, um, and you are a, and you're a DD, then expect at some point in the nearish future you'll probably get an email to say um, stop using that account, and or we will somehow find a way to link that account to the single sign-on system. It's a bit in flux at the moment, and that's exactly something that would work very well at a, at a bit at a sprint or a, a BSP type setup. Um. On another topic, um, I'm not sure if anyone here is, has other languages that they can speak and write, but the wiki, it is possible to to do translations, and you can, the way it's currently set up is you do, you add the language code to the start of the page name with a slash after it. Um, that's not the best way to do it, and it'd be great if we had uh, a different way, maybe with um, get text files or something. Mm. But it'd be great if someone could research that if you're interested. Yeah, certain of the system pages in Moin, because this is provided by Moin, will automatically um, redirect you to the appropriate page. Say, if you log in and your machine is set up and it can recognize your browser says it prefers French, uh, you won't get sent to front page. You'll get you'll go to the French equivalent. I don't know why I picked French because that's the one I, can't, I can never remember the front page translation. <laughs> um, but for example, you know, I, I've tested this myself. It's it's maddening because once you've told your browser it knows about all the languages, trying to turn it turn that off again never seems to work for me. And then I spend the next day tr struggling to read Dutch or something. It's <laughs> Can you uh, speak a little bit about the uh, performance and infrastructure of the wiki? Sure. Um, the wiki itself, we used to run on dedicated hardware that, frankly, was was uh, a cast off from from other uses. Um, over time, as we started getting more and more uh, page views, I the thing I should have done as well was actually go and get grab the stats for that. Um, we realized that actually it wasn't going to work that well. Um, we've since moved over to a dedicated VM um, or provided by DSA, AMD64, with huge amounts of memory. So basically it runs a, a, I think something silly like 16, 32 threads of uh, WSGI uh, running Moin. Um, it seems to work okay. Um, we have found we were we are one of the biggest Moin using sites on the planet. Um, we did find that we had a major issue. Uh, there was a major performance problem with page saves uh, not that long ago. Um, so you could happily read the read the wiki pages, but saving something could take literally a couple of minutes. Um, and that turned out to be it was a scalability. It was a design flaw in the way that Moin notifications are done. Um, when you go to save a page, um, there isn't a link from that page to each of the users who is known to have, um, to be wanting to watch it, to get notified when it changes. So instead it was walking through the 12,000 user accounts, looking in every single user um, password file to see, does this person want notifying about this page? Um, that doesn't scale very well. <laughs> um, so there was a uh, patch already that the GNOME wiki people had come up with 
Uh, I tweaked it slightly. We've reviewed it backwards and forwards a bit. Uh, I think it's actually gone into Moin for 198, which is due, release, due to be released soon. Um, and then it went down from like literally a couple of minutes to maybe two or three seconds, which is fine. Um, a lot of people may not have noticed it, but um, if you went to a bug squashing party and the, the uh, convention is that at a BSP you will fill in uh, details about all the bugs that you fixed, so you so you've got you know competition if you've got BSPs in two locations, or you can just point people at it later and say, "Yay, look what we did!" Um, if you've got twelve people around around a table, all of them working on bugs and wanting to update their list, um, by God, that was painful. <laughs> so I got shouted at a lot at a BSP, and that was what prompted me to go and fix it. Um, so. Um, I'm not aware of any other um, major performance issues at the moment. Um, we did have a fairly well publicized um, security breach a few years ago, which was due to a bug upstream in one of the drawing plugins, and that was fixed, and that caused reset. One of the flip sides of that, one of the downsides, was many, many of our older accounts were, from, were set up by people who had never put in email addresses because you didn't have to when they first signed up. So a lot of those people, we had to of course reset all the accounts, disable, you know, disable all of them, force people to, to do user account, you know, password changes. For those people who didn't have working email, there is no way of doing um, an automatic password reset through Moin because it sends you an email. So, if you're one of those people and you couldn't log in anymore, sorry, talk to us. The great thing about that security uh, hole and attack was that we uh, adjusted the configuration of the CGIs yeah. so that they ran as a different user and they can't modify the files. Sure, exactly, yeah. Pre the default setup of Moin is not very pretty in terms of security. It's, a, it's, it's simple, it works, but it... it it does end up with all of the data and potentially a lot of the Moin code itself owned by the same user. We've explicitly set up a privilege separation for the Debian wiki to get around that. Uh, and we worked, hard, worked with the DSA folks to, uh, for quite a while to get that working and they were awesome about it. And I mean, it was basically, it was just over Christmas that year and Weasel ended up basically spending a lot of time overnight, if I remember correctly, installing a new machine. We migrated all the pages. It was horrible, but hey, it, sometimes it happens. So I've been wibbling far too much in here. Please, does anybody else have anything? Hello, um, I'd like to, um, I've got a question which is about the uh, website, is yeah. the previous topic. Um, it, each time a developer commits uh, a change on the uh, website, it, we, it have, we, there is four hours, there is a script scrum to, uh, to... To rebuild. To, yeah, yeah, to rebuild. Is, um, why not just at each commit, for example? I think Neil has an answer for that. So when I update um, update bits of the website for the press releases, just updating the news section where all the press releases go takes about 10 minutes or so. So basically, it's just huge. I mean, the, the actual size of the site to generate it from WML and all the languages we have, um, it, it's about a... 540 megabyte um, repository, so it's, it's basically the time just to generate all that HTML it, it is sort of the issue there. Uh, yeah, for pages where we know that they shouldn't be affecting m very much, it, it is, as I understand it, it is possible to just rebuild small bits of the website, but it's always potentially risky. Uh, the way that WML lets you cross-link things and you know, essentially hash include bits and pieces and use macros all over the place, um, that's what it boils down to. Yeah, it's not pretty, it's not great. I'm not aware of really of a better solution. Um, I think we are just about done. So, um, oh, no, one more. 
just yeah, uh, about the website too. Um, I, um, uh, currently, it's uh, with CVS. Yes. If I will understand it, because there is a hook which is used for translation or something like that. Yeah. Um, is it possible to um, to use more uh, get text and profiles to uh, fix some of this problem? There was some discussion on IC about this. Um, apparently, that PO4A supports WML, so we could possibly do that. And at the moment, there are some parts of the website that are using get text, but not the whole thing. And so there would have to be a conversion and that could be totally manual, I would think, yeah. but I'm not entirely sure. Yeah. The biggest problem with, I mean, with a, lot, a lot of the ideas that people have spoken about, I mean, like the Git migration and whatever, is um, we're struggling to find the people with the, band, the, you know, the people bandwidth to, to get through a lot of this too. Um, more volunteers needed, or, as always. Yeah. And if you have any questions about the website or the wiki, Steve and I are here, uh, we're both here all week, I yeah, think. Yeah, absolutely. So, yeah, come and ask us. And if um, you want. Yeah, and we're both on the best list, and of course I should have put this down, but didn't. Debian we're, we're, we're at list.debian.org or wiki at debian.org um, is the best place to get in touch with not just us, but w with all the other people involved as well. Um, and well, thanks for coming. Hopefully that was, in that was useful. Thank <laughs> you. 
loved any movie in this one. Oh God, it was, I, there was a point, I don't know, I'm three, that we kind of all despair. We're like, okay, I'll get a beat. Yeah. 